Welcome back ACPS staff. In this fourth video, as I said, we're going to return to adding additional media options to a project that you're creating. Now I've cleaned up my project a little bit. I've returned just to the one simple video clip that we started with, as well as the image clip that we got from WeVideo's stock footage. In addition to videos and images, they also have audio, text options, transitions, extras, and backgrounds. And we're going to go into all of those menu options in this particular video tutorial, starting with audio there at the top. You don't always necessarily need narration over every project that you do. Sometimes what you want is music to play over top of that, something that's kind of inspiring, epic, something that invo in invokes the dark feelings of a particular video that you might be creating. And so we videos audio selection of music is categorized exactly that way. What is the theme that you're going for as a part of your project? You can find music that will accompany and help reinforce that theme as your viewers watch your video. So all kinds of categories here. If you want to know what a clip is really going to sound like, you can simply select on it here in the uh, media area and then it will play. When you find a particular audio track that you might like to include as a part of the video project that you are creating, what you're going to do, just as we did with our video and image clips, is you're going to select that and pull it down into the project area, and you're going to put it into the track here that is dedicated to audio. So we're going to drop that here into audio one. We're going to make sure that we bump it all the way up against the beginning of our project here. And now when we click play, we're we're going to not only see the video and the still image, but we're going to have this very inspirational music that's playing over top of that while our video plays. There's a couple of options that I can use to edit this particular clip. The first one is down here on the track itself. It allows me to adjust the volume level of this particular track. I find that the stock audio that we video has is quite loud. So I typically like to change it from 100% down to something a little bit less than that. That way we get the feel and effect that music can add to the video, but it's not always so blaring in my ear. Years. Now if I click play, it's still there, but it's not quite as uh, forceful as it was before. The other option is that we can take a look at the track itself and see uh, how much room it's currently taking up. So I'm actually going to go over here to the right hand side on my editing toolbar here. And you'll notice that I have the ability to zoom in and zoom out. Right now my audio track is running off the side of the screen. And so I want to zoom out just a little bit until I can see that entire audio track. And what we notice is that my audio track is way longer than the video project that I am currently creating. For example, my video project is only about 12 seconds long and this audio track is 3 minutes and 20 seconds. If I finish and save this project right now, my viewers are going to see about 12 seconds of video imagery and then they're going to listen to an additional 3 minutes of just this song playing playing. And that is certainly not the effect that I am going with. So I've got a couple of options for how I can change that to get those to be the same size. I can bring my playhead to exactly the end of my image right there and make sure that I'm selected on that audio track. And then I can use the scissors here on my editing toolbar to split or cut that particular uh, clip. And then I can take everything that came after that and I can just delete it. My other option, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. 
My other option, as we saw previously, if I bring my cursor all the way over to the right hand side of that audio clip right there, I can simply select on the right edge and drag it all the way down until it lines up with the end of my video clip. Now I have a video that's going to play on the screen for about 12 seconds. The audio is also going to play for about 12 seconds. So let's put our playhead back at the very beginning. Click play. And once again, we are previewing what we are creating by playing back as we go through the process of building our project. I have additional options for editing audio, just like I had with video and imagery in the last uh, video tutorial that we created. I can double click on it and it will open the options over here. Now I mentioned in the last video when we were talking about editing that what you can change depends on the type of clip that you had clicked on. For example, there's not a whole lot to edit about audio other than adjusting the volume. So when we come into the editing window for a piece of audio, that is the only option that we have here. And as we saw, we also had that ability right out here on the track. So some purposeful redundancy for what we can do with um, the audio there. Let's turn our attention back to adding media and let's go to our next option there, which is to add text. Text allows you to put a text box over top of a video or image clip. This can be a great way to have a title slide or uh, end credits in the video that you're creating or to even announce some type of a transition. If you're changing topics and you want to add uh, some sort of a, a chapter into your video, these text boxes are a great way to do that. As we saw previously, you can select on one of these to preview it over in the player. You'll notice that we have headings like titles, caption, we have multi-line, seasonal, all kinds of options here um, for the different types of text that you can add to this. And then some of them have this tiny little uh, header or label in the upper right hand corner that says motion and that means that there is some animation built into this text so for example this one appears and then fades out on the screen and that is a motion option as opposed to this first caption on the left hand side which is going to be still no animation no motion in that one at all as we have seen with uh, other options to add media when you find something that you want to work with you're simply going to drag it down and in this case we're going to place it on that uh, video track in our project called text one and that is going to put it in the front very important I can have images and video in the text track but if I put the text underneath of them I do not see the text it is behind the text is behind the image. So what you have on top when you are building your project is what is going to be uh, most prominent for um, your audience when they are viewing your video. So you always want to make sure that you have your text tracks up there on the top line and then video and images on the second line there. I'm going to move that all the way back over to the left hand side. So let's zoom out just a little bit. And then just as we saw with adjusting images, if I want to make sure that this is on the screen for the entire time my video is playing, I can drag that right hand edge out, or maybe I only want this uh, title slide to be displayed for like the first five seconds of my video. I can adjust that as well. So putting that end line exactly where you want it will determine how long this text box remains on the screen. Now I'm going to double click to see the options for editing text. Because I chose a text clip that has some color in it, for example, that pink box at the bottom that says swipe up, I can change the color palette of that, but I can also change the color palette of the text itself. So instead of white, if I want the text on the top to be in black, if I want the text in the second position to be in black, and maybe instead of pink, I prefer a blue. I have all the options to change everything incorporated into that color palette right there.
Then we have the ability to change what the text it says, what the text itself says by editing what it uh, what is displayed here in these boxes. So the box at the top says shop now, but I can change this to say fall and then maybe change the second one to say my favorite season. Keep in mind that these boxes, these text boxes, by default don't grow. I can certainly select on the edges of the handles and drag this out to make it larger, but when I typed more text, when I changed the uh, very simple shop now words to my favorite season, the text simply got smaller. So you want to be very mindful of choosing a text clip that has enough space for the amount of content that you want to add to that box and then use these handles to make it larger if your font has gotten really small after you added some of your content there. Now we're going to go to our second menu option for editing a text clip and that is transformation. We saw transformation as an option when we were editing a video clip. This can allow us to change scale. You saw I just did that manually using the handles in the corner. I can also change the position here to get it exactly on the X and Y axis but once again I can do that manually by moving it to where I would like it to be on the screen. I have options to do things like flip or get the mirror with text it's going to make it pretty hard to read but that is an option there and then I can even rotate it so if I wanted this to just display up one side of my video I have that neat little effect option there we had opacity fade and then blur the background as options for that one as well just as we saw previously when you are done editing your text clip you come to the upper right hand corner and click done Now let's turn our attention to our next option to add media and that is transitions. Transitions allows you to smooth that transition between any individual clips that you might be adding. For example, in our current project, we do have this one transition where we go from this panning across the hillside straight into the still image. And right now, it's just very abrupt. You go straight from the hillside straight to looking up into the trees. These transitions that WeVideo offers allows you to smooth out that process. You'll see that they have titles like cross fade, cross dissolve, dip to white, all kinds of neat options. If you select on one, it will give you a sort of an example of what it looks like transitioning between two clips that are available. For example, we see it transitioning from sort of this city view to this uh, hillside with a, a waterfall hill here. If you like one of these and you want to add it down to your project, you can simply drag that down and drop it right in between the two clips that you have. And then what it does is apply that specific transition in between those clips. And it does this automatically. It just bumps them over with no need for you to adjust what's in your projects area. So now if we move our playhead just a little and click play, We see how we get that cross mosaic where it looks like everything pixelates before then we transition to looking up into the treetop. So it just smooths out the transitions between any of the image and video clips that you are adding into your projects. So let's turn our attention to our next menu option here, which is extras. Extras has neat options like overlays and callouts for you to add to the project that you're creating. For example, one of the overlays is like falling snow here and that would put this particular effect over top of your video or image and immediately color key out that black background. So where it looks like it's black right now, that actually indicates that it's completely transparent. So if we drag this down and we put it over top of our uh, trees here where we're looking up into the trees, you'll see that now what we have is looking up into the trees with the effect of snow falling down. And then the other option there was your callouts, where you can have things like 
arrows that will allow uh, you to draw your viewers attention to a particular place on your screen or you can even have uh, text boxes with arrows or what looks like word bubbles that are coming from uh, someone in your video there. So a couple of options there, overlays and callouts under extras. And then our last option here is backgrounds. Backgrounds fit really well if you're going to use text as a transition all by itself. For example, I can click on one of these backgrounds, decide that I like it, and drag it down into my project here and put it in that second position. Now I can create a text box that will go over top of this where I could have a title or again a chapter or something to announce a transition that's going on in my video. Once again as we saw a moment ago with those overlays where you see text over top of a black background actually indicates that if you put this over top of something else like an image or a video that that background will be completely transparent and you will simply be able to see what is behind the text uh, come through and only the text is there on the screen. So I'm going to move that up so that that white is a little bit easier to see instead of being right over top of that very white glowing center right there and then we're going to want to edit that text to make sure that it says what I want it to say instead of sample text and of course as we saw previously in the video that's done by double clicking on this clip and then changing what is displayed here in the text box and then I also have the additional options to change things like bold underlined italics I can change the color of the font I can make it so that it's just an outline and so on. When I'm done editing my text, I click done in the upper right hand corner to be taken back to the editor's window for the entire project that I'm creating. So in this video, we focused on the additional media options to add audio, text, transitions, extras, and backgrounds, and we went ahead and talked about lots of ways that you can edit your audio and text in order to make them better fit the project that you're building.